apparently never been in was so quick to agree to take you in with us. I assume it was happenstance. I happened to be near you, and that happened to be what happened. Krog was yeah. pretty sure he was going to get arrested. <laughs> well, Krog, you did throw a man into a into a burning fire. Usually, you try he, to do it the other way around. He, he probably me. deserved it. I will do it again. Uh, Hayden just just sighs and like. Visibly mm. size. Yep, alright. Yeah. Maybe if we uh, grab the other guy, he might know something. So, uh, Crowd's gonna kick open this door and uh, yell, Hey, get over here. He, he throws, he throws his own a shop. chain with a, with a hook attached to it at, <laughs> at Austin and pulls him over. Dude, I can make that happen. Yeah, I tell him to settle down there. I'm waiting also, for purple mm. guy to show up. Well, I don't know don't anything you guys have said since you're in a different room. Yeah, you just heard about just that pointing that out he real quick. He just kind of got his hand in the window, staring out for, with yep. like forlorn eyes. No right, one so I... knows what it's like to be the so... sad man, <laughs> to be the bad man. All right, well, so I'm gonna look over else? at. I'm gonna look yeah. over at uh, what's his face and ask. So why the hell are you taking some? Of, like, why are you getting some of that liquid? Because I don't know about you, but I don't want anything that's been anywhere near Crod's feet. And that's exactly why I want to have it. <laughs> I, why? You're a weird man. You're, you, I, wish to, I wish to use it in a component to create something else later. I sell it on the internet. I'm sure someone will buy it. <laughs> All, right, All so you I, need to know I, is that I, this could be immensely useful to me later. I, I'm not sure I even want to know. So I'm going I'm to look over in Krog and ask, like, have you ever seen those guys in the purple cloaks before? Uh, well, I'm going to, I guess if uh, the other guy is not compliant, I'm going to go back to this room and uh, reply that, no, no, I've never seen him before. Uh, but if you want more weird stuff, I got a shop full of it. So here's a stuff. question. Oh yeah, over to the other. So here's a question: um, Would I do any? Have any of our characters, like me and Crod, have like? Would we need to roll like local knowledge or for the guys in purple cloaks? Oh uh, yeah, if you'd like, absolutely. Ooh. I've got bardic knowledge. Yeah, absolutely. Roll that. Crod knows some stuff. He knows some good songs. Hayden yeah, is a clueless bastard. <laughs> Ten should get me like general info. But that's really up to you. I actually have a local knowledge as well. <laughs> oh, you roll it up. Okay. Yeah, but where, 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 do, where's your character from? Like that's that's where your local knowledge pertains yeah. to. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, on my character sheet, it is actually Waterdeep, but um, the Waterdeep region. So. Okay. Do it up. Yeah. We need this. It's a five. What do you know? Surprise. What a surprise! Surprise. Yeah. You're too busy drinking crowd juice. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> okay. Has <sighs> anyone rolled a knowledge local check? Is it I what? haven't rolled knowledge anything, but I travel Currently, a lot, so I don't think I'd have any local knowledge. You're also not even in the room. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm seeing, I would be seeing if I knew, but... Oh, I'm not yeah. gonna to yourself, so I wonder. I don't. Uh, Curtis, <laughs> yeah. can I actually ask you something? Would I have found anything at all on the on the body that I looked at regarding any sort of orders or written commands or anything like that? You know, the only thing you know is that 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 though the the person, the people that you killed, were the anarchists belonging belonging to the Second Sun Army. And let me write that in chat. Okay. But me and Crod don't know this. Oh, you do, because they were wearing... They had the clothing on of this. You you know about okay. them. It's, they're kind of a big deal in Waterdeep right now. Okay, so the, you mean the green guys that blew up the thing, not the purple guys, right? No, all of the people you fought. Okay, yeah, cool. The, yeah, the, yeah, all the green six guys. of those guys were Second Sun Army people, yep. Yeah. Okay. Right. Uh, the, the guys in purple were presumably... Uh, 
vassals or servants of some kind to the lord who bid you to work for him. Okay. Alright. Um, cool. Well, I I kind of bring that up to the party. I'm like, uh, do you guys know much about the people that attacked that cart then? The, uh, the poor use of alchemy was quite striking. What do you, uh, well, first of all, I, yeah, okay. What do you, what do you mean by poor? It seemed to burn pretty well. I like, I take out the, uh, the little, is it orange? I guess it's orange, yeah. Little orange vial, and I kind of shake it up a little bit. And You see how it reacts like this? Alchemy fire is not supposed to be this volatile. And I kind of like take it off and I sniff it a little bit. It's like, it is poorly made. The, the substances within it are just shoddy beyond belief. Uh, I'm, I simply have this so that I can find out more about where it comes from because this alchemist needs to be taken down. It's terrible work, and if he's selling it to someone, then this is this is terrible. You, well, if, he's do- if you, yeah, go ahead. Sorry, Max. So, I, I, to be f- like, so my character could probably pull that this guy. He's all about alchemy, mm-hmm. considering yeah. the okay that he j- he just did a science rant about you, and you're like, oh, okay, he's not. <laughs> and, and then and then the from between that and the crog juice, yeah, so, yeah. So it's starting to make sense. Anyway, yeah, the pieces no. are falling into place, <laughs> yeah. but. I was going to say, Dave, you have you have the equipment there to do a knowledge alchemy check on that substance to learn about it. I was actually going to wait for the um, you know plot to die down before doing that, but if if you okay. if you allow me, no, I will you, do it, that now. I will tell you, you have a chance to do that once you get done. Okay. Role playing with yeah. I I like sort of like throw it up and catch it in my hand a little bit. And I'm like, all right, and I turn around and I uh, I sit down at the table and I and I start to inspect. The poorly made alchemist fire. All right. With the equipment that you have there, if you're going to use knowledge alchemy on this, you will get a plus two bonus to your roll. Okay. Circumstantially for the equipment that you have there, because it does constitute for about an amateur alchemy lab, Mm -hmm. just in the kind of equipment you have access to there. Okay. So, each use, you can... Oh, my God. (laughs) Brilliant. Okay. So... Now that you, so as soon as you take that vial out of the centrifuge, yeah, <laughs> and take off your lab coat. And it's like oh, I've got it, Eureka! All right, so you know that this is that the substances contained within are three parts. The first is the base alchemist fire, which which is a, a standard like you know the standard alchemist fire recipe, but it has been cut with cheap alcohol, right? Like we're talking like rubbing alcohol grade, like mixed with. Like, mixed with it. It's been cut with it. And the third and final component that is very telling about level of alchemy is there is an ignition component that makes it burn much hotter that is a staple, an absolute staple of southern alchemists. You know this is a technique that they use for, like, their own personal brand of alchemist fire, Right. That being said, it's pretty clear that the guy who made this is, a point, used to making cheap, dirty alchemist fire for this kind of thing, is from the south is from south of Waterdeep, by a great rate, by a, by a fair range, and the third thing you know is that this has been produced in a very high quantity. Okay. Like the batch size would probably be a lot. It would be like right. cooked in a like it would be created in, a, in large batch sizes. Yeah, probably in uh, dozens of gallons at okay. a time. All right, and the, the the you can tell by approximately how how well this stuff burns and ignites that the uh, firebomb that hit the carriage was probably about um, a liter that got that hit all at once and went up. Okay, and while you're explaining this to me, I'm I'm jotting this down in my actual book in game as well. Yeah, um, you're you're writing all this down. You're writing tests on it. Yeah. The tests that you run in this alchemist fire use it all up. There's none left. Sure, but you know you have gained, garnered all this information. That's that's you, my that was my intention when grabbing it anyway. You, I wasn't going to use. Also, papers. know the exact ratio. So if you absolutely had to, you could recreate the mix yourself from scratch. Uh, what was the? What do you reckon the 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 role on that would be? Uh, DC 12. Okay. 
on craft activity. Like it, it, it's super simple to make. Okay. All right. And yep. So I, I, I kind of, I get away. I, I turn back and I, I kind of, well, uh, I know where this comes from. Uh, this is this is very reminiscent of the the type of shit that comes out of the south of uh, Waterdeep. Very very mishandled alchemy. It's uh, terrible. It's mixed with cheap alcohol. It's it's just it's it's gross alchemy. Um, so I kind of look at him and I uh, and I ask. So by like south of Waterdeep, what do you mean? Like how far south? South district. No, like a couple hundred miles geographically south. Mm. Oh. Like down below Baldur's Gate, perhaps even. Yeah. It's way, way south. All I know is that it's uh, mass produced, and if anything, those uh, gentlemen that we fought earlier, they are probably going to have more of this. Expect it if you ever come across them again. That is my only advice to you. Great. To this you. day's been wonderful. Jackasses in purple cloaks kidnapping us, and other jackasses with alchemist fire. That's how I wanted to start my day. I mean, if we, if, if we want to find these guys, do you want to buy some and then squeeze the employer? Oh, I can make this stuff. It is, it is easy work. Absolutely easy hmm. work. I mean, if you want to find the anarchist. Oh, uh, look, it would be my pleasure to put this miserable bastard out of existence. He's bringing... <laughs> he's bringing... He is, he is bringing shame to anyone who, who carries the, the name of an alchemist. That is for damn sure. Yeah, I, I, don't really, I don't really care about any of that, but I generally don't like people who firebomb things in the middle of a street. Now, the fact that they're fighting an, a royalist, well, hmm, might have to give them some points for that, but aside from that, all right. Yeah. Chronologically in game, it's quickly approaching midnight as you guys talk, and th the entire process of taking apart that concoction took quite some time. Yep. So you're approaching midnight, perhaps 10 till, and have you guys? Uh, you guys haven't eaten yet, so I don't know if you guys want to get something. If you if your characters want to get food in them, I would count that time that you've spent in the shop is rested for the sake of restoring hit points. Alright. How much do we restore? Um, if, you take, if you take an 8 hour rest, generally I think it's between 2 and 4, I would just cludge it so that you've healed up like you've put some salve on your wound or whatever and you'll be, you'd be good to go at uh, full HP again if you guys have eaten and just been sitting down most of the time. It was a small dagger. Yeah, well. yeah, it, was, yeah it was a short sword that caught him but it didn't do enough to like really really do a lot, so... Right. Alright, so I'm guessing you guys have eaten and you've at least been kind of sitting around resting, right? Sure. Alright. And So, I I'm assuming in this time, like, we've introduced ourselves so we all know each other's names, at least. It's uh, Unless Aristid is still doing the behind blue eyes thing to the <laughs> window. <laughs> it's, it'd be worth pointing out as well that I've kind of warmed up to these people yeah. a little bit. Um, so, I won't be so... <laughs> Wanting to leave so badly. Quite is extremely callous. I'm, and now, yeah, yeah, I'm actually really interested in uh, Crod simply because of his alchemy collection. Even if it is like you know, uh, baby smells together. Baby's first alchemy set. Um, <laughs> roll a search, really Dave. Roll a single search check for right. the duration of time that you've been there tinkering with stuff, like and doing the wrong uh, and tests and whatnot. Okay. Well, Dave is doing. Uh, stuff do I get a bonus for how long I've been there? Or? Oh yeah, give it a plus two to your normal roll since you've been going through this stuff around the entire time. Ooh, okay. So with that twenty-two search check, um, hidden behind some of the barrels in the kitchen, where the some of, where that like empty food casks is a is a it's a vial of a mysteriously colored liquid. Okay. It's not uh, brewed in a, it's brewed in like a third party kind of vial from because generally you have the containers for potions and the containers for alchemy concoctions and this is in a non-standard container okay does it uh, how can I put this uh, is it okay so a vial is an is an easy way to carry things it's safe glass doesn't really yep. react with any sort of components 
Uh, is there a way that I can know if the this container will react with whatever components that I normally would use? Uh, it's full. It's, there's actually stuff in the container. What I'm saying is, and it, it's glass. It's glass, but of a non-standard make and design. Okay. All right. Yeah. Because you've got fragile? a general potion, huh? Is it, it fragile it's, or? Uh, it's a thick container. It's okay. thick, but generally potions have a have a more bell shaped, and this would be like a long stylized vial. Okay. But it's a thick glass. Okay. All right. And the material and within is a very like it's like an ochre color. All right. I uh, I call Crot over. Mm -hmm. Orc, what what is that? Do you have any oh. idea what that is? Um, Crod brings a lot of stuff into his store. Do you uh, just do, uh, do you have any knowledge checks, Crod? Use Bardic knowledge would probably file under that. Like, just have Crod remember where we put like what this is, maybe. Okay, I have knowledge uh, arcane. Yeah, knowledge arcane would be perfect. Oh, here we go. So that's gonna be significantly better. Okay. Yep. Oh man, you're like, you know immediately that it was a bark skin potion that had come in with a number of other things some time ago. This is where Crod floors you with immense vocabulary. <laughs> with, with fist? Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, Crod's pretty much just killed people lately, and then this is where he goes, well, this is the Mucanium Arcanum uh, Barkus Skinnus, the potion distilled from the most magical dryad plants of all in creation and it's just it's just way over the top right. stuff wily it's, coyote so does it, do we do you have any idea what it does like um i believe oh, with that knowledge um you, you you know you know what a bark skin potion does it gives you uh system mechanically gives the 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 imbiber four points of natural armor okay yes so i, I will respond saying that uh it should make your skin much harder and uh more resilient to weapons yep perfect and that's in a container that has... It, it's a non-standard design, so it only has one use in the container. Okay. All right. Um, I, I sort of pick it up and eye it, and I was like, why is it back here, hidden away? Um, crowd, crowd is messy. Crowd does not like to be organized. Also, Crowd is very busy. He has shows to do every weekday. Do you... And uh, things get shuffled around. Do you mind if I use this? Um... Well, no, it, Crod does not mind. Okay. Um, it, how much time... Do you think we have time for me to sort of, like, an, al, an, an analyze, analyze? Analyze. Analyze. No, you person? don't. Okay. Like, it's, it's, it's nearly midnight, and as you're, as you're, like, kind of eyeing the potion to start off with, mm -hmm. um, Ariston, if you're still out front, you see a guy in purple carrying something with him coming in. Can I make a spot check to see what he's carrying? Absolutely. Yes, go ahead and roll that. Make a javelin check. Put it through his eyeballs. <laughs> Don't use javelins, I use spears. Oh, it's not yeah. the same. Well, not the same <laughs> yeah, thing, man. man. All right, well, I, um, I pocket the box in the ocean, then. God, Ariston, you beast. Yeah, he's, he's, carrying some, he's carrying a human, but it's the human is wrapped in, like, a tarp and bound, but it, and it's struggling a little bit. The fuck? So the guy uh, in purple has this has this person under one arm and kind of gently wraps in the door. Well, as he's approaching, I shout back to everyone, we've got company. Mm -hmm. uh, I walk and out. I draw okay. a spear and just sort of casually hold it in one hand, just in case. Like you like you have it you have it at, at your side, but not yeah. like pointed oh. or anything. Alright. Crod pulls like a, a great axe hanging from above the wind like above the door frame. And just kicks does, open the back door. And does just, he break? Does he break it in case of emergency? Great axe. Yeah, it's it's exactly sure. what it says. Uh, I follow. Uh, you I guys follow all outside too. You would be inside the building still. Like <laughs> he he's coming in as you're doing. Unless he leaps through Crop a fucking charges window. into street. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Kind of move so. over, and I sit like half on the stage. If how like how high is the stage? Can you guys hear me? Yep. Oh, how high is the stage? Like five feet off the ground. Okay, I kind of, I kind of, like half, like sit up on the stage. I will also do the same, except I, I won't sit next to him. I'll sit sort of aside from him. <clears throat> oh, is this uh, this lady? This person entered. I'm in a very 
Hold up just a second. Brandish. Yeah, he's... Yeah, so he's oh. got... He comes in and motions and kind of drags this guy with him, right? And he takes them towards uh, who, this wh- area. Who's dragging who? Uh, the purple dude is dragging the dude in the helmet. Okay. The, the dude in the helmet has got a tarp on him still, of course. This guy, like, deposits the, the bound guy and says, all right, this is one of the anarchists that was part of the plot today. I'll get a fire started. My lord, my lord <laughs> wants you to question him and learn of where their recruitment base is so that you may Recruit infiltrate yourselves? and learn about them. L- infiltrate and learn about the foes that you have to face. Kind of nods to Karad and then... Whoop, whoop, whoop. I, uh, and and when we out. do the... Get, get the fuck back here. <laughs> okay. Just, okay. Get real quick. We have important <laughs> questions to ask. No, he does not when just we, walk the fuck out. Look, you, you can't we, just like, talk to the hand. In your hood. You can't just, you know, be all plotty and mysteriously <laughs> yeah. show up. We are going to so, question this shit. Okay, so he, when he, he stops. When we do this, where do you want us to go with this information? Because you might remember you kind of brought us in blacked out carriages to somewhere we don't know and we don't know who we're he serving. Says, he, he, say, he, he, he nods and says, we'll be watching. And he also pulls out a pouch from his belt and hands it to Crod. Distribute as you see fit. Uh-oh. And he says, with with that information, he says, like, get what information you need from him from the, about these about the anarchists. We'll get in touch with you once you figure that out. Like once you come back from that. Before he leaves, Hay- Hayden kind of hops off the stage and like walks yep. forward a few steps and points at the guy like, what the hell are we supposed to do with him after we've gotten the information? <laughs> there, there, there's, 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 the, there's just kind of a pause. It's like, I will come and collect him. Do as you will otherwise. Uh, real quick. And then before, and before he steps out the door, he says, I clean, I, I will clean up after you. I, I will clean up if there are any messes and <laughs> steps out the door. And, okay. Uh, well, Curtis, real quick. What is the yes. color of the, uh, of the uh, alcohol. Ooh, the color. It's clear. It's like rubbing alcohol. Damn it. Okay. Why? Uh, don't worry. It wasn't going to work anyway. Okay. So basically I was going to show him the guy the potion and say this is the alcohol. Oh, you still alcohol. have a little you still have a little of that fire left. Cool. All right. Yeah. The good. color of it is, you know, different than normal alchemist fire, but the the alcohol component at least is clear, but the whole mixture is not. Okay. All right. right. So So you have this guy and he's bound in trust sitting on the floor, right? Mhm. Um, Balls in your court now interrogators. Okay. So I, I sort of announced that we just have to get information. Easily done. I like walk up to this guy and I, I sort of pull out the remainder. Remember, you guys are in front of windows still. I don't care. Oh, um, I'll pull the curtains uh, that says we are not closed. Crod, <laughs> Crod gets the curtains. All right, so I kind of walk up to the guy and I pull out the, the curtains. Just have a monogram to fuck off on them. <laughs> <laughs> it's in like a really nice script with like red just, letter. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> so right. I walk up to the guy and in my hands I have the sort of remainder of the uh, the alchemist fire that the poorly made one and i i sort of uh, dangle it in front of his face is he is he awake sorry he he's conscious and he the tarp is now off him i would assume if you're dangling in front of his yeah, face yeah okay yeah i take the top off and i say yeah. uh, afternoon uh do you happen to know what this is and i hold it in front of his face you see you like you brush you'll never get me to talk well that's okay I... because um I know what this is. I know exactly what it does to the internal organs of a human being. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you two chances. If the first uh, words out of your mouth are a lie, then I will pour it on the outside of your skin. And it will hurt. It will hurt quite a bit. Not just because of the crappy alcohol you guys have decided to slice into this uh, alchemist fire, but because it's just volatile by nature. And I assume... But I thought he used up all of the alchemist fire. It's... Th- the usable amount of it. Like, there's, yeah. like, an inch of it left, yeah. right? Oh, okay. And, like, not enough for it to be effective, but enough to torture someone with, yeah. And, gotcha. So, and then, and then, and, uh, so if I don't get the information I want the first time, that's what happened. 
That's what will happen. The second time, I will make you drink it vile and all. I don't know if you've ever had glass inside your stomach with Alchemist Fire, but I assure you it's pretty painful. I, uh, okay. I, I walk up to him and say, I, okay, I okay. have a, before have a that, better before idea. You, so are you, unless you're going to assist him in being threatening, right? Oh, yes. Well, I mean... All right. So are you going to add to this action? Y- yes. Okay, then you walk up next to Kale. What do you do? Um, I'm going to cast Summon Monster 1 and Summon a Giant Fire Beetle uh, and make it <laughs> glare at him. In Croc Shop? <laughs> yeah, it's, that was, it's, That's it's not up. a good idea. Why? Because fire you might burn, burn his things. shop down. It, they're, they don't, they're not like actually on fire. It's Summon Monster yeah. 1. It's a two-foot beetle. It's a beetle that, that can shoot glows. fire. No, it can't. <laughs> is it, is it hot? Like, at his temperature oh. rises? Up. Oh, they they have two glands, one above each eye, that produce okay. a red glow. That's why they're called fire okay, beetles. Okay, okay. They're just I'm sorry, like, my mental if, you're gonna, if, you're gonna blow, if you're gonna blow one of your summon monsters, go for it, I guess. But... Absolutely. <laughs> all right. I, was, I just had, like, all right. While he's doing that, I'm gonna walk over to kind of here and kind of lean down to the guy and go, and if you and if you do lie, I'll know. And just kind of lean down and put his hand on his shoulder. Okay, so <laughs> since Kale has got the base intimidate ta- intimidate check, you're gonna get a plus two modifier for knowing about alchemy. All right. And a plus four modifier from the assistance of the other two. Yeah, okay. well, I'm going to help. Total plus and six. I'm going to say, uh, Krod, Krod does not care if you tell the truth or lie. It would be an honor to kill you before then. All right, so I, my, my, uh, my intimidate okay. is negative one, so. Five would be the yeah. bonus to it. <laughs> oh, shit. He just kind of uh... looks at you with fear in his eyes. I, I never really wanted to be a part of this. Like, he breaks down sobbing. And he's... <laughs> the right. base. So and he tells you the address of oh, the cool. base. Fantastic. And Perfect. he tells you that the password for the night is uh, the sun will rise again. Oh. And... <laughs> he just sits there whimpering afterwards. Very clearly broken. As far as intimidation I, goes. I want to ask him about how he was al- originally recruited. Did somebody approach him, or did he approach them? Great question. That will... All right, he says, uh, you go into the office. He says, I went to the office, and somebody had mentioned it. it g- the word just gets around for recruitment nights, and I guess tonight's one of them. And he goes on to say that if you know the passcode, go in on the right night, like tonight, and you're attentive and you play you play nice with their with their whole spiel. They'll give you they'll they'll tell you and give you like the whole recruitment deal, right? Okay. Okay. So cool. it's now about a now about half past twelve, and he says that they they recruit until dawn basically, on these nights. So, what uh, is your plan of action? Before, I kind of lean, I guess I'm still kind of like, like kneeling next, like half kneel, like taking a knee next to him. Yeah. I'm going to ask him, like, okay, so how many people are at these recruitment drives? Dozens, maybe a hundred. A hundred? I kind of I kind of look around at everyone else, like, mm. what the fuck, a hundred? It's a lot of people are unhappy. How many of these uh, recruits actually do get recruited, and what happens to them if they don't? Oh, it, he, he says that it, you only get into the main assembly hall if you're recruited, otherwise you're turned away. Okay. Do you, they, know, what, they, they do you know anyone else that, uh, that didn't make it? Uh, no, I don't. And what are they looking for in recruits? Uh, skills. Do you know people? Connections? Do you have talents? None of the above. So why did they pick you? <laughs> no, but he basically um, he basically vomits up the facts that there's a big recruitment building. They swap it around. They have like basically they do it like a, a religious revival 